course for the sports gamer. What's good, sports gamers? Let's start the vid by admitting this. Every year there's a group of players whose virtual counterparts are given too much credit for what that guy does or did in real life. Some may be actual stars, and others will give you the business all because they're nice at one particular skill. Or they won the genetic lottery. Some call them hidden gems, others call them cheese. We'll call them our top 10 most overrated players in NBA 2K16. Let's begin. Coming in at number 10 on the list is Channing Fry. For as long as I've been playing 2K, if the player could shoot, they might as well be Michael Jordan. And if that player also happens to be nearly 7 feet, even though Fry shoots 38% from 3 for his career, once the lights come on and the ball is tipped, the man turns into what the Knicks thought he would be when he was drafted 8th. It's like he plays with a chip on his shoulder, he will switch nearly every open jumper he takes, and will throw it down on you if the lane is open, and somehow protects the rim like his middle name is Matumbo. It may just be a testament to the user knowing how to utilize him, but it'll have you ready to rage quit as you shake your head if you don't respect this gangster. Trust me. Number 9 on the list is other than the absolute triple OG not to be messed with name that this man has. George Marisine is what we call in the 2K community absolute cheese. Main reason is this creature is 7-7. Seven, seven. Now don't get me wrong, this is what made him effective in real life, but in the world of simulation basketball where the belief that anyone taller than 7 feet is one of the best rebounders and the dunker machine that doesn't even need to jump, he's a rare breed. If I run into someone using him, I already know what's about to go down. I admit he was able to grab the rim in real life by just standing and reaching up, but some of the animations he triggers are unreal and just being that high up makes all his inside shot attempts look easy. Who needs a Will Chamberlain with this guy running the streets? Number 8 most overrated is Terrence Ross. Playfully nicknamed T-Raw, no tiger. Just for how savage he is in 2K, he's been one of the best players to get to start your my team with since he's been in the league. And in real life, check it out, he's a slam dunk champion. Career 37% shooter from three, and tied Vince Carter for the most points in Raptors franchise history with 51 in just his second season. Furthermore, in the 2K world, being an athletic dunker with a three-point shot can cancel out almost any version of Michael Jordan your opponent has. His fight in 2K lure was solidified last year when the Dunk the Funk packs were released in my team, and his card was given 99 speed and quickness to go along with his already unstoppable dunk animations. He's not the go-to of a team, but if you have bad transition defense, he'll get a couple breakaway dunks, knock down a couple pull-up threes, and before you know it, he has a nice little 30-piece on you, jerk not included. Number 7 on the list is Michael Cooper. Nicknamed MC Square because he locks you up so hard you feel like two people are guarding you, Cooper's one of the best defenders that will ever be in 2K. Previous years, his usefulness as a defender was always overlooked because how fast your defender was always ruled out. This year, if you let the CPU play defense with Coop, expect your opponent to cut you out in the messages. And because he's so thorough as a CPU defender, there's basically no point in using him. And because it's a video game, you will very rarely get more than two inches of breathing room. More than anything that I've noticed in my experience playing against him is the way he bumps you while playing defense. It's so aggressive that it's almost disrespectful. Like, dude, can you let me score, please? Number six on the list is the jump shot, Kevin Martin. Who has long been known as the cheese player to use, he's one of those knockdown shooters that make you question why you have Larry Bird. In 2K10, he had one of the best my player shooting forms. It was quick and not hard to get perfect releases with. By the time the defender realized you shot, the ball was already at the bottom of the net. Skip forward to 2K16 and nothing has really changed, especially with his throwback card in my team. He was nice in real life in his youngest days as you would look up the league leaders in points per game and he was always hovering around the top despite the casual fan not knowing who he was, but the 2K community did. Nowadays, despite his injuries and getting up there in age, what made him great in the early 2K still makes him valuable today. Smart people shot for Kmart. Number five most overrated, sadly, is St. Joseph's own, Jameer Nelson. Others know him as Goat Mirror, Godson. Firstly, let's just establish that yes, Jameer was one of the most underrated guards in the league during his stint with the Magic. He played off Dwight Howard in the pick and roll to perfection hitting the shots that came to him and was aggressive when needed, and even ended up as an Orlando Magic all-time leader in assists. However, this is where 2K logic comes into play. Being a career 36% three-point shooter and an undersized guard who struggled against bigger defenders, his throwback My Team card was blessed with a 90 shot rating from close, mid-range, and even from three. Understandably, due to him shooting 41 and 45% from three in two of those key years, as well as nearly 48% from two. 
But when you look at a card that will be expected to be a mediocre point guard and he has stats like this, it makes the logic of this game sink in and you start to question life. Tie all of this in with his clean crossover animation, you might as well have baby Steph Curry on your team. Long live Goat Me. Number four most overrated player is Rudy Gay. There's a clip on YouTube of a play-by-play -play commentator calling the game where Rudy was taking the final shot and his words was Rudy Gay, oh no, not this guy. Of course Rudy ended up hitting the shot. I have to be honest to say there's a realistic reaction whenever I see him on somebody's team. There isn't that one shine of season you can sit back and go, okay, I can kind of understand why he's this nice. Even his in-game stats aren't that nice. The only thing that translates is his dunking ability. But for years, Rudy Gay has been terrorizing the 2K world. We don't know how or why, but this man just makes everything. If you run into somebody using him, you might as well just accept the 30 spot on 15 shots that's about to come your way. Because there's no stopping him if your opponent knows what he's doing. And number three, Gerald Green. I know you're waiting to see where this man ended up on the list. He could have easily been number one, but then that would have been too predictable. Gerald Jesus made his debut as one of the 2K legends back when my team started in 2K13. He flew for dunks like MJ and hit threes like Ray Allen. He played just enough defense to stop your man and then scorch him right back on the other end. I have to say that this is by far the most annoying person to ever play against in 2K just because of how consistent he is every year. And on the fast break, oh, he's dunking on you, don't fight it. Terrence Ross is trying to take over the title of the athletic three-point shooter from Green, but in my opinion, as long as Green is in the NBA, that's going to be tough. And like Kobe Bryant this season, we might as well appreciate the greatness while we still can. And number two on the list, I might get some flack for this one, but this is the list of the most overrated and overpowered players in the game, and the MVP is no exception, Stephen Curry. With all due respect to him, some of his in-game stats have been bestowed upon him off his name, not his game. Similar to a cover athlete on a sports game getting an extra two points on their overall or some peripheral rating boosted up that people won't notice just because they're on the cover. For example, Steph is known as a shooter, a scorer, yet his passing stats are on par with Chris Paul. And to his near max shooting stats, he's not just the best shooter, but the best all-around player in the game. Furthermore, he's almost as fast as Russell Westbrook and John Wall, Bruh. the most naturally gifted athletic freaks in the NBA today. And his on-ball defense and pick-and-roll defense ratings are on par with a defender like Paul George. So I don't know if the guys at 2K are sleeping on George or giving Curry the usual cover boy boost. Now I know if you're a Curry or Warriors fan, you probably hate me right now. And all I can say is, I'm sorry. And our number one most overrated player on NBA 2K is, would it be too much to call it GOAT over? Michael Jordan. Say what? Although it's just 2K, there's still a level of name respect given to MJ just because of who he is. Firstly, I think it would be fair to say that out of his five versions in the game, at least three of them are given reigns that are ill-deserved. Starting with his younger selves throughout the 80s, who all have well-developed post-games and mid-range shots when that wasn't a strength at all for Jordan at that time in his career. So you got young Jordan dunking on cats with the tongue with a silky smooth mid-range and post-up fadeaways? Damn. Skip ahead to bald head Jordan era, more specifically 95-96, where 2K gave him an 89 three-point rating. Michael Jordan, an 89 three-point. Come on, man! But 2K was slick with it. They picked the one year where he finally shot a decent percentage to create what would be the perfect card in the game. It's like if Mo Williams had a card for his 52-point game. However, it's more than just his in-game stats. MJ just does things that remind you you're playing a video game. And not to say that he didn't do this in real life a lot but it's the rate at which he does it almost every time he comes down to court. I don't know who at 2K thought Jordan did these amazing things that we remember for almost every single play, but he is easily the most unrealistic and unstoppable player on this entire list and deserves our spot atop the top 10 most overrated NBA 2K16 players. Now, if you got somebody that you think deserves to be on the list, leave it in the comments so we can compare notes. Subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and be good, y'all. What's good sports gamers, Dirty Draws here and I'm going to start a series where I go over different play types and my favorite plays out of them. And today I'm going to go over cutter plays, aka plays to get you easy looks at the basket. And the first play I'm going to go over is 98 cut 3 swing. Before you start the play, just make sure whoever you're calling the play for does not already have the ball. You start on the same side as the guy you called it for, then you begin to work the ball around the perimeter. And what begins to happen down low is the other guy will set a screen for your guy running across the paint for a shot at point blank range. 